everybody, and welcome to another episode of Paul and All. As always, I'm your host, Paul Casey, and this is a solo episode. Uh, I am here to ask a question that was posed to me, or more to answer a question that was posed to me uh, recently by someone at my job. I walked into, uh, I work in retail, and uh, I walked into the back room, and someone that I know who I have, you know, general conversation. We get in, in more in depth in conversations every so often, but um he looked at me and with zero prompting, he looked at me and said, "So what are you doing with your life?" And I laughed at this because to me that was very funny because it was just so out of the blue and uh I didn't quite know how to answer him. And uh, I was like, what do you mean? And he said, you know, oh, you've, you've gone to Hawaii twice now. Um, you know, what, uh, so what, like, what are your plans? And, and I commented that um, I, I don't, well, one, I don't think that I've peaked because I really don't want to think of the best part of my life having happened and now I'm on a decline. I like to think that I still have upwards to, to go. Um, but I, I, it made me start to think, what am I doing with my life? What am I going to do with my life? And as we close the year, um, uh, in about a week, it'll be my birthday. And I'm just thinking about where I was last year versus, and I mean, yes, you know, over the next few weeks, everyone will be doing the same thing. Um, and I made I may talk about it again in a future um, podcast, but uh, I'm just thinking of where I was last year versus where I am this year, and several things may seem the same. I'm still recording some podcasts by myself. Um, I am still working at the same job. I'm still living at the same place. Um, there are several things that are different. Um, I did go to Hawaii a second time. I increased friendships with people who I, I thought I was good friends with. And it turns out that we weren't as close as I thought we were. And we are even stronger now. Um, last year around this time, I threw myself a birthday party and I had people come in from out of state just to come celebrate my birthday with me. And that meant the absolute world to me. Uh, those people, I've, I've told them several times, and it's been a year, but I still talk about, I still have stories from when they came to visit. And it was, and I mean, everybody who, you know, all my friends and family local who came, obviously I am forever grateful to those people. But you know, there is a, there is a, it's almost a separation because it's great when people do things for you and you, and you don't realize often, or at least I don't realize, I don't think about it because I, I don't think about how much I mean to other people because a part of me doesn't care and a part of me cares too much. So I try to put it out of my mind, but for people to take time to go out of state to come see you for your birthday, that is a huge thing in my mind. Um, and the fact that they would come to see me, like in, in nowhere, Pennsylvania, like that's the even uh, stranger part. Um, but yeah, so I, I think about the fact that, that people came from out of state to come to my birthday. I had, uh, you know, great times. I, like I said, I went to Hawaii, uh, recently. Um, my dad came back after 10 years. I hadn't seen him in 10 years and I got to spend arguably one of the greatest weeks of, of my recent memory was spending that week or so with him and, I will fully admit that when he left, I cried. I don't cry basically ever. 
Um, I talk about it a few times on the Lost with Friends show, and I, I talk about it, you know, in my personal life. I, I love, anybody who knows me knows that I love television. I've never really cried at TV. I've had things where it makes me feel emotional. It makes me feel like I almost want to cry, but I just don't cry in general. It's very, very rare that I actually shed physical tears. When he left again, I cried. I really did. And I'm not afraid to admit that because I was, I'm in, I was incredibly sad and I still am sad, but I wouldn't trade the week that I had with him for anything, it was amazing to be able to spend that time with him. Um, so yeah, that happened. Um, I, I got to meet new friends. Like I said, I got to meet new friends while I was in Hawaii. I got to reconnect with people who I thought were out of my life forever. And that was a, a truly amazing experience. And I could never, uh, thank those people enough for uh, giving me a second chance for just you know renewing renewing a friendship or friendships I should say that I thought were truly lost no pun intended um, that was that was uh, a great experience for me making new friends um, while I was in Hawaii uh, who they are people that I love. They're people that, that I think about often. I, you know, we check in, we talk every so often and, um, you know, you'll, you'll hear some of them on like the lost with friends show and, and, uh, they're, they're amazing people and good people. And I'm just so glad that, uh, I got to, I got, I get to have them in my life now. Um, let's see what else have I done within the, Oh, Obviously, uh, I've had this show for almost a year, and I've had the Lost with Friends show for almost a year. And the fact that um, I have people who are consistently willing to sit and talk with me, sitting and talking on microphone. I mean, unless you try it, I don't think people realize how many people don't want that in their life. You see, everybody has, well, not everybody, but most people have their favorite YouTubers or their favorite musicians, or even if you're a fan of podcasts in general. And a lot of times people think, oh, well, that's easy. And on one hand, it is incredibly easy because you just turn on the recording, whatever recording program you're using, you turn it on and you just talk with people. Or if you watch YouTube, you just think, oh, well, I'll just record the, the goofy things that me and my friends do. And it is 100% not that easy. Um, it's it's incredibly easy when you have people who are willing to take the time because so many people don't necessarily want uh, I've, I've talked about it with with Jake on the podcast and off the podcast uh, over the course of this last year, just in terms of recording things on microphone and then having the the my phone's camera on for a large portion of our Hawaii trip. I brought him, I brought myself out of, out of the shell of, yeah, you know what? I'm comfortable being on microphone. I'm comfortable being, I mean, personally, I've, I, I feel like I've always been a little more comfortable doing, uh, things like this, but for so many other people and there's some stuff, uh, from the Hawaii footage that didn't get to go in because I recorded it and some people were like, you know what, I, I, I much prefer if you didn't use that, I'm not comfortable that that was recorded and I'm perfectly okay with that because I know that not everyone is like that and I understand, but the fact that people have agreed for almost a year to sit down and talk with me about random things for this show, whether that's, uh, I had my mother on as my very first guest of, you know, talking basically about all of the, um, celebrity deaths in 2016. I have the feeling at the beginning of 20, uh, 2018, we might do, um, certain career deaths of certain people the way that this year has gone. 
Um, but from talking with her to talking with uh, Jake about random things, uh, talking with Esteban about television, talking with um, Andy and Andrew about travel and their lives and football, uh, American and European football, um, talking with so so many people uh uh, with with Zach about wrestling and like I said being able to sit down and have something with my dad while he was here I got to sit down and I got to record two po- I mean yeah we did so many things we we went to various places around the area because he hadn't been back in 10 years we watched you know a bunch of videos we watched television shows we just sat and we would we would just talk uh, me and him and him and my mom and me and him and my mom and we would just like there was just so many things but the fact that I got him to sit down because he's very much a not out of his shell person, but I got to sit down and record not one, but two podcasts with him. The fact that he was willing to sit down and record with me and talk with me about, even if we talked about wrestling, it was just so amazing to sit with him and be able to, to say, Hey, you know what? I want to record conversations with you. And he was, he, I mean, he was probably hesitant about it, but he, he did it. And that was amazing. And that's something that, you know, years ago probably wouldn't have, have been able to happen. He probably wouldn't have said yes to something like that. Um, so that was really cool uh, to be able to do live streams on Facebook where I sat, I've sat and I've, I've talked with my mother and people have watched our interaction and watched how kind of how we do the show, even when things aren't, when it's not being, you know, live streamed to everyone we, you know, we have the live interaction where people can, can, you know, there's the little chat box and they can, they can talk with us. Uh, having my friend James here and, you know, being able to talk with him about where he grew up in New Jersey and television shows. And then again, to have people interact with us, uh, for, for various things, to be able to put up past episodes of, um, the, the, uh, just trekking along series that I attempted just basically have a platform to do all of this stuff and people willing to, to let, to sit down and talk with me. And again, with, with regards to lost with friends to get people who are willing to sit down and we all share, we have, we all have so much in common and that's why we remain friends is because we have more than just lost in common. But of course that is the one thing that brought us together. And it has, I think that there are lifelong friendships within these groups of people. And there are some people who there are certain things where I, I may only have lost in common with them. doesn't make them any less of a friend, but there are others who I, you know, I'm able to sit down and talk with them about anything. But the fact that any of us are still willing to go on for hours at a time about a show that's been off the air for almost 10 years, let alone it debuted over 10 years ago. In a few years, it'll have been off the air for almost 10 years, and we still love it. And as recently as one of the most recent episodes of Lost with Friends, we're still discussing fan theories with each other. And we're still coming up with different ways to explain certain things that quote unquote didn't get answered in the show. And we talked about that, how that's one of the biggest things that people get upset about, you know, oh, they didn't answer all the questions. Um, but you know what I mean? Like the fact that we still have these various discussions. And like I said, we can still talk at length and the fact that people are will and the fact that because of that show as i said i've grown friendships with people i've realized i have so many things in common with other people be it other tv shows that we watch or films or um you know uh 
wrestling or uh, I'm not necessarily that big into sports, but I can talk sports and I love listening to, to people uh, talk about sports or other things that they are passionate about. Uh, about and just conversations about where the various people from around the world live and just the differences between even from state to state, country to country, time zone to time zone, you know, ha- being able to sit. I mean, it was it was a pain to coordinate three different countries, three different time zones, but to be able to sit with m- with two amazing people, not just amazing friends, but in general, these are just good people, Andy and Rojen, and to just, to just be able to sit with them and just, you know, even there was a, a, a joke uh, that, that Andy made about the difference in American versus uh, English, you know, the word refrigerator. And he, he thought, that me saying fridge because he just thought that Americans just say the full word refrigerator. And I'm like, no, we say fridge because you know, that's, it's just the shorthand. And then we joked that, that in, it's it's not true, but we joked that in, in uh, Canada, they say refrige because it's, you know, I, I said that Canada is almost the balance between um, America and uh, England and to, but to just be able to sit there and, and talk with them about, about various things, it was just such a truly amazing experience because what so many people don't hear so often because of how I edit the shows, there are so many non-lost topics that get talked about during the recordings of Lost with Friends. There, The unedited recordings of some of these versions of these episodes, you may see, oh, the, you know, a two hour episode or hour and a half long episode. There is the possibility with some of those episodes, that was a four or five hour plus hour conversation that I then cut down to the important lost with friends topics, you know, and you know, one day maybe those will get released. Probably not, but those are just conversations because it's, yeah, the lost aspect of it is important, but it's the friends aspect that's even more important, I think, because we are all friends and we do have this general love. And, and like I said, just the fact that for for a year, almost a year, people have been willing to just sit and talk with me or with with all with everybody and to be able to to put that out there so that we can all hear it and we can all cuz I still get messages from from other people who've been on the show who say oh, I was listening to the episode and I I I want to I talk to my radio or I took cuz people listen to it in their in their car on the way to or from work or or I so badly want to want to join in the I wish I was a part of this episode because I have so many things to say about what you were talking about and to me that is the greatest feeling that is that that's one of those makes me want to, I don't cry but it makes me want to cry because of happiness because it means that I, I feel that we're doing something right if if that happens. If you are listening and you want to join in on the conversation that you're hearing, that means we did something right. That means that we engaged you. And to get even if it's even if it's to yell and say, Paul, why did you not think of this episode? Or, you know, like, uh, I got, I got a, a, a tweet recently from a friend of mine. Uh, I don't know if he would want me to, to name check him, but he, he commented like, you know, cause, uh, at one point we were talking about, um, episodes of Lost that have character titles in them and we forgot, uh, everybody loves Hugo and everybody hates Hugo. And, uh, of course I'm incredibly embarrassed that I forgot those, but, um, he said he's he's yelled and you know how could you not remember this and uh there was another time where i said something and i didn't even realize that i was using someone else's argument that they had presented to me and it wasn't and i i did apologize for it and it turns out that it wasn't necessarily in an accusatory oh you're using my argument but just in terms of it's so great because you you know, I can tell you feel this way. And the fact that you're 
maybe coming around to my side of the argument or you're realizing these things that maybe a few years ago you wouldn't have realized. And these are like real world issues, not necessarily like lost mythology issues. Uh, it's, but it's so great to get these, these tweets and these texts and everything from everybody that, you know, like I'm listening to the show and I, I want to interact with, with you and whoever else is on because you're, you're, the conversation is so, they don't say the conversation is so compelling, but I like to think that that's, that's, you know, me reading between the lines of what they're actually saying. Um, but it's, you know, that's that's just a portion because it's it's hasn't even been a year yet and that's just a portion of the answer of the question so what are you doing with your life well what am i doing with my life for the last year i've been recording podcasts for the last year I got to spend an amazing week with my dad. For the last in the last year, I got to go to Hawaii for what two weeks, two and a half weeks. Um, what am I doing with my life? I on one of the episode, a live episode of Paul and All, I announced that I'm working on a feature film. And yes, I will fully admit to everyone listening right now, I have stepped away from the script for a little while. I have sent it to a few close friends to get their opinions. I've got their notes. And I'm going to rededicate the next few months to fight because it's something that I wouldn't be able to film until the spring or summer anyway. And right here, right now, it's the middle of December. So I do have time to, to, prep the script a little more and get, you know, some financing and other things like that taken care of. But I am going to be rededicating myself because I, I announced it on a show and I intend to follow through with that. So I'm, I'm re-announcing, I'm rededicating that I will be making that film within the next, within, by, by the end of 2018, I fully plan to have that film made. And it may turn out, I really don't want it to be the case. It may turn out in a year I'm recording this going, oh, I still didn't get the film made, but I'm announcing right now that I'm trying. And I hope that everyone who listens to this will help keep me accountable. Ask me every so often, how are things going, you know, and whatever, and keep me accountable for that. So that is one thing that I have done over the course of this year. I've been, I've been writing that I've written a few short films that I'm going to be, uh, that I'm going to be getting really soon. I have, uh, I have to just find the time to get the people who are supposed to be in them together. That's really, really the only thing that's holding us back right now is, is just finding the time because what else am I doing with my life? I'm, I'm doing podcasts multiple times a week. I'm working at my job for money that basically lets me be able to do these podcasts. I'm constantly writing, I'm constantly editing, and, um, I'm announcing here for the very first time that within the next few weeks, within the next month or so, I will also be recording three pilot episodes for potential new podcast series. I'm not going to say what they are. I'm not going to say who they're with, but I have three pilots that I'm going to be recording over the next few weeks for potentially new podcast episodes because that's the next Uh, The next thing that I also want to do in 2018 is I not only want to continue the the uh, because now that I have the podcasts on iTunes and SoundCloud and that's that's another major thing is that from the beginning of the year to now. I would only ever post everything on YouTube and people were like, okay, yeah, but this is, this is kind of bothersome. And then I was able to have some things happen that now I'm able to, to get the podcasts out there. And I know some people still complain a little bit that, you know, oh, they only want to stream for Lost with Friends or they only want a stream for Paul and all, not that anybody really listens to Paul and all, unfortunately, or they only want, but like right now, 
it's free. Don't complain. Um, <laughs> I mean, I love you all and I love that you all are listening, but like, it's free. Don't complain. Listen to all the shows. Um, but that's the other thing is now that I have this uh, thing where I'm able to um, put these shows out there for uh, for audio only, I want to build the YouTube channel as for the visual element of things. I'm going to put short films up there as I'm, as I keep doing things, I'm going to have little, little clips of, of various other things. Cause I have some other things in the works, uh, as well. Um, I'm going to, uh, 2018, I really want to build this into, a network of various podcasts. Like I said, I have two of them right now I'm doing. And again, that's not to say that the three shows that I'm doing pilots for are even going to work, but I am trying, I'm, you know, trying to get new things out there. And they're also, you know, they're, they're, if they work, they're going to go up in the clock shelves, uh, podcast feed. And, you know, I want to, I want to have like a little network of podcasts so that there's, there's various things that you can listen to or watch or whatever on, you know, various days of the week or whenever your whenever your free time is. Cause that's the other beauty of it is that it's all there. Once I put it out there, it doesn't matter if it's today, tomorrow, six months from now, a year from now, 10 years from now, it's there. You can listen to it. It's all on demand programming. That's another thing that I like about this is we're so much into the instant gratification of, I put something out there. How many views does it have? Or I put something out there. I need everyone to message me. Now I'm getting people who, because of the lost with friends show, they actually are going back. And I I was, I was flabbergasted. They're actually going back to some of the Paul and all, uh, episodes and they're listening to them and they were like, oh yes, I was just listening to the episode, the uh, in transit episode where you and Megan recorded while she was driving around. And that was amazing to me that somebody's going back and listening to, to some of those episodes. And that was earlier this year. And I mean, yes, okay. I don't have that much, uh, that much stuff, like that much content, but like it's, you know, I have within doing Paul and all for a year and lost with friends for the year. That's actually basically two years. Uh, one, you know, if you listen to each show once a week, that's almost two years of, um, content that I have, uh, up there. So the fact that people are listening to that, and like I said, I'm, you know, so podcast network is one of the goals for 2018, uh, fully doing things exclusive to the YouTube channel is one of the goals for 2018. Making the film one of the goals for 2018. So, to, I mean, I know this is this is going to be rather short, but to to answer the question, what are you doing with your life? I'm trying to work at things. I'm I'm trying, and I will never ever be able to say thank you enough to the people who just, like I said, they take their time just to to talk. And I remember when so many people have told me, Paul, and this is over the past few years when I've wanted, because I just released a podcast episode recently from what, two and a half years ago where I sat down and I I talked with somebody as a test pilot for Paul and all two and a half years ago. And everybody, not the person who was on the episode, but people used to tell me all the time, Paul, no one wants to listen to people talk for an hour. Paul, no one wants to listen to people talk about things. They want to see things. Everything needs to be visual now. But yet, these podcasts are doing pretty well, even if it's within the its own niche community of lost friends or just my friends, that's enough for me, you know, and there will be visual stuff. There's going to be, you know, the, the, the lost with, or I'm sorry, not lost with friends, but the, the stuff specifically for the, for the YouTube channel. Um, this uh, coming Monday, actually, I'm doing something a little different with Monday's episode of, um, Paul and as long as everything goes according to plan, as of this recording right now, I'm doing going to be doing something a little differently with um, uh, the next episode of Paul and all that you will hear after this. So um, that's going to be something a little different. I'm not saying this is one of the pilot episodes or anything, but like if people like this, I might want to do more things like that in the future. Um, 
But so, yeah, to answer the question of what am I doing with my life, I'm just trying to work at things. I'm trying to, trying to, trying to do the clock shelves thing, man. Um, you know, and I will never, I will never not be thankful for how great this past, because I mean, if this is everything that's happened within a year, and as long as I keep working at it and you all keep listening, I, 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 I just can't wait to see where I am when I'm sitting down to do next year's uh, kind of year in review, what are you doing with your life um, episode. And I, I just, I can't wait. And like I said, as long as I, as long as I keep working at it and as long as you keep listening and the, the best way to, to, you know, let me know what you all want to hear, you know, get in touch with me, tweet me. You're, you all, hopefully you all follow clock shelves on, you know, the various social medias and I'll, plug them here. It's only 30 minutes into the episode, but I'll plug them here. You know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, at Clock Shelves, YouTube.com slash Clock Shelves, SoundCloud.com slash Clock Shelves, if you're not on iTunes. If you're on iTunes, uh, separate words, Clock Shelves Entertainment Presents, you'll get the podcasts. Um, The best way to let me know about anything that you like even things that you don't like, because I, I like to hear that stuff too. It, it may bother me a little bit, but I need to hear that too. Tweet me, Facebook, you know, comment on Instagram posts, all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, that's the that's the answer to that question. And I don't know if that person from work listens to these episodes, but just know that that question has been weighing on my mind. Um, over the last few days, the question of, so what are you doing with your life? And I think the basic answer that, that I can give to kind of sum up the whole 30 or so minutes of this, of this podcast is I'm trying to build something here. And I don't know if it's working, but until, until I think otherwise, I'm going to keep doing it. And I'm going to keep having fun with it because that's the, that's a, yes, it's, it does. It stresses me out so much. And anybody that's heard me talk about things, I do talk about how it, I get stressed out with so much of it because like, oh, I don't have this episode ready or, oh, I have to, I have to coordinate with this person or that person or whatever. But like, it's just the, in the end, it's so rewarding because even though I'm not getting paid and I'm not paying my friends and that's the bet that's even greater is because they're just doing this all because they love it and they're willing to do something for me. Um, but how often do you really truly get to sit for multiple hours a week and just talk with your friends? Like just, I mean, it would be so much greater if we were all in the same town or city or house even. But how often do you get to sit and just talk with all of your friends from around the world and talk about things that you like and talk about things that, that have drawn you together and talk about your, your shared experiences and all that sort of stuff. And I don't think people get to do that as often as they actually think they do. You know, maybe, maybe you text with people every so often, maybe you, you know, you talk, uh, you know, once or twice a week, but I get to, I get to sit here and I get to talk with so many of my friends every week. And it is a truly great feeling when I get to, to do all that. And, and I mean, I'm kind of just tre- retreading the same ground over and over again. It's just, I'm so thankful. Um, I'm going to keep working. I'm, you know, you know, as, as, as the YouTubers and all the, the millennials and everything is a big things coming, you know, big things coming. Um, I, uh, yeah. Um, I, I, I'll make a quick announcement here cause I'm probably, I'm gonna have to figure out something else to pad the rest of this episode. I might, I might do like a reading kind of old school, especially since it's been a year, I might do like an old, like a reading, like I did from one of the first few episodes. Um, but a uh, quick announcement that the plan is because um, next week 
the week uh, beginning, the week ending the 16th, 17th, 15th of December. Um, that's my birthday week. So um, as a special treat for people, uh, for the fans, and again, to show you how thankful I am, the plan is, I'm not making anything official, but the plan is... Um, three episodes of Paul and all and three episodes of lost with friends that week. So, um, that's the plan as of right now, you heard it here first. Um, yeah, I will probably be back, I guess. Cause this is, this is not very long. I thought maybe I would talk a little longer, but, uh, uh, I will be back with something else. Like I said, I'll probably just find something that I've written, maybe do like a, like a dramatic reading or something like that. Um, but thank you so much for your support, your continued support. Thank you for listening. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing, following, sharing, all that sort of stuff. Um, all I ask is stick with me, stick with us because we're trying and literally can't do it without your help. So thank you so much. I will never be able to, to show you how much I truly appreciate each and every person who's listening to this because you're taking the time out of whatever else you could be doing, whatever better programming is out there. And I know there's better programming out there, but you're choosing to listen to me talk for a half hour. You're choosing to listen to me and a British guy or me and a Canadian girl or me and a Venezuelan man or whatever, me and my mother, me and my father. You're choosing to listen to us, to watch us on our live streams. You're choosing all of that stuff for whatever reason. And I can never say thank you enough. I can never show you how much I truly appreciate that and you. So 2017 is not over, but 2018, big things coming. So Thank you so much. Uh, Like I said, I'll probably be back in a few minutes or, you know, it'll be seconds for you, but I'll probably be back with like a reading or something. But that is the answer to the question. What are you doing with your life? So thank you for listening. Uh, Keep listening, because even though I'm going to cut out in a a few seconds, uh, I will be back with something to pad out the rest of this episode. Um, Be on the lookout for more Clock Shelves stuff. Again, follow us. uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat at Clock Shelves. Um, youtube.com slash clock shelves, soundcloud.com slash clock shelves, uh, clock shelves entertainment presents on, uh, iTunes. And this has been Paul and all almost a year in. Thank you guys so much. Love you all. Okay, everyone, I'm back. Um, so I decided I was looking through things that I could potentially read, and um, I decided I didn't necessarily want to read anything from the amusement park film, um, the first half of the Gateway pilot I've already read, and this, I, I plan on doing something with the second. I plan on doing something with everything about it, but I plan on doing something with the second half. And um, on the computer that I'm currently on, I don't have many of the things that I've written in the past, but I did have something that I sent to a few people and it's something that I haven't actually looked at in quite a long time and I thought it would be fun to sort of go over it and read it. Um, this is Act 1 of a television pilot that I wrote several, uh, maybe about a year or two, uh, yeah, a few years ago, um, and it would, it's, the working title is Vice, and um, it would base. It was basically when I was in the heavy mindset of Sons of Anarchy, uh, Breaking Bad, uh, you know things like that. Shows where very much the anti-hero and the the anti-authority and you know breaking the rules and and the the villain is actually the protagonist and things like that. And I was very heavily in the sons of anarchy mindset because as much as sons of anarchy is somewhat based upon, um, 
uh, Hamlet, this was very much based, and you'll you'll see that that becomes a little more evident. This is very much based upon um, Shakespeare's Macbeth, which is one of my favorite Shakespeare stories. And so it becomes a little strange partway through. It's it's very much a realistic series. It's not meant to be. Um, supernatural, despite the fact that Shakespeare's works are supernatural. Um, so this would, again, this is act one of the pilot episode, Vice. Okay, so um, I do apologize in advance, uh, just based on the shows that were kind of my mindset at the time. Um, this is a more adult type of uh, story. Um especially more so than the things that I tend to write. There are um, overt references to sex and drugs and things like that. And within the world that this takes place, I'm trying to, I, I would be trying to portray it very realistically. So this would definitely be something that would end up more on a cable or premium cable uh, type of network if this were ever made. So um, I do apologize in advance for that but I just I, I did want to say all of that before I get to it. And uh, so, yeah, I'll just start off. From the darkness, a small flame. It is a match or a lighter. It quickly drifts across the middle of the screen before meeting another object, creating a second small flame. It's a cigarette. Just as suddenly as it appeared, the first flame goes out. Smash cut two. Exterior, car, night. It's raining heavily. From outside a car, we see a man sitting in that car. This man is smoking the cigarette we just saw lit. This is our main character, Carl, 30s. He's staring intently at something in the distance, waiting. Smash cut to interior, Sterling's bar, same time. Two men enter. They're dressed nice, but are dripping wet. They try to shake the water off, but it doesn't work well. We will soon find out they're police detectives. They look around. There aren't many patrons. The detectives move to the bar and sit down. Angle on a man on the other side of the room. This is Jake, 40s to 50s, well-dressed, the owner. He immediately noticed the detectives when they entered. He slowly makes his way towards them, stepping behind the bar. The male bartender, Kevin... 20s to 30s, is approaching the detectives, but Jake waves them off. After arriving at these men, Jake stands there, staring at them. They stare in return. Jake is not happy the detectives are in his bar. However, he cannot let on his true feelings. Therefore, he attempts to act nonchalant. Jake to the detectives. Evening. How can I help you, fine gentlemen? The detectives don't flinch. Detective 1. We'd like two glasses of Montigny, please. Jake tilts his head questionably. Jake. Is it really a good idea for two fine officers of the law, such as yourselves, to be drinking on the job? Can't very well catch the bad guys that way. Jake smiles. The detectives look at each other nervously. They've been made. Smash cut to interior drug house, same time. Inside an old, run-down house, we see many people taking drugs, drinking, and general debauchery. It isn't fun, it's vile. We focus on three people in particular, one woman, two men. These are our three druggies, 30s to 40s, stoners, modern hippies. They are taking multiple drugs. Druggy one. The world spins faster and faster, Yet we judge cars by miles per hour. How can this be when the world spins faster than that? As the world turns like sands through the hourglass, we only have but one life to live. Druggy 2. Virtue itself turns to vice being misapplied, and vice sometimes by action dignified. Druggy 3. I smell a smell so vile, it lingers in the air like fog in the morning. I think the king is a man as I am. The violet smells to him as it does to me. Smash cut to interior, Sterling's bar, moments later. 
Jake is still standing behind the bar, facing the two detectives. The detectives, still dripping wet, knowing they've been made, decide to be truthful. Detective 1. So how's business? Jake. Business as well? Now they're just bullshitting each other. The second detective doesn't want to waste time. Detective 2 to Detective 1. Can you believe this guy? Jake looks to the second detective curiously. He gets cocky. Jake. Detective, whatever could you mean? Detective 1. Cut the bullshit, Sterling. We both know about your side business. Detective 2. You may have this whole town fooled, but not us. We know the devil when we see him. Jake. I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. All I do is provide drinks to the fine people of this town, as well as have my hand in a few other local businesses, expand my horizons and stock portfolio. Detective 2. Well then, if you've got nothing to hide, you wouldn't mind if we looked around a bit. Both detectives, without moving, turn their heads and begin looking around. Jake, not flinching, holds his hand up to stop them from moving any further. Jake. Unfortunately, I do mind. You see, I have a lot of important documents and other personal and professional possessions here, and I'm going to need to see a warrant and consult with my attorney before you even begin to search these premises. He shoots them an evil grin. He's got them. They are clearly angry. Detective 1. You really are evil. I can't wait until someone finally knocks you off that high horse of yours, because I am sick and tired of having the devil in our backyard. Jake gets a serious look on his face. Jake. See, the problem with that is, I'm the devil you know. Whoever knocks me off will be the one you don't. Imagine that. He again gets a devilish grin. Cut to exterior salon, same night. It's still raining. This salon doesn't appear to be a large location, but there are several vehicles in the parking lot. From the outside, it looks like a normal business. Cut to interior salon, moment later. Inside, there are several men and women cutting and styling hair. Again, this seems like a normal business. The camera searches around the room. We see the stylists at work and the clients walking and waiting, reading magazines. Eventually, we land on Tina, 30s to 40s, beautiful, powerful, the owner. She's currently styling the hair of a client as she carries on a conversation. Tina, mid-conversation. And I told her, honey, if that boy wants to sweep you off your feet, let him. Client, oh, Tina, you're so bad. Tina, what? She's 38. Let her have some fun if she wants. He's 22 and wants her. Nothing wrong with that. I wish I could get a 22-year-old who wants me like that. Another stylist leans over. Other stylist. Tina wishes her own husband would want her like that. Everyone laughs. Angle on the front door. A female client, 20s to 40s, enters. She's wet from the rain. Angle on Tina. Tina, yelling, Jason, your next appointment is here. A young man, Jason, early 20s, athletic, chiseled body, enters. Jason, to the female client, Hello, I'll take you right back. The female client leaves money on the reception desk. Jason leads her into a back room. As they're walking, Jason looks her up and down. Although soaking, she's clearly happy and excited. Jason continued jokingly, I see you're already wet for me. Although the other shoe doesn't drop yet, we do get a hint as we see briefly through the doors into the back, men and women in robes being escorted around by the workers of the salon. Angle back on Tina, smiling a devilish smile. Smash cut to interior, car, moments later. Carl is finishing his cigarette. As he exhales smoke, he looks over, revealing a woman sitting in the passenger seat. This is his partner, Liss, 30s, attractive. Up until this moment, we had no indication she was in the vehicle. She returns his glance. They nod towards each other. Carl then picks up his walkie-talkie. As he presses the button to talk, we faintly hear music fading up. It's a guitar riff that sounds somewhat familiar. Carl, into the walkie-talkie. Okay, everybody, we have one shot on this. Let's move in on the house, then hold your position until further instructions. Carl and Liss nod to each other once again. 
they both grab weapons, make sure they're loaded, and exit the car. Time lapse. Exterior drug house. Moments later. Carl, Liss, and a few other officers are standing, holding their position outside the drug house. The music grows louder as lyrics kick in a moment later. It's Drowning Pool's cover of Rebel Yell. Carl holds his fist to indicate holding their position. He then waves his hand, indicating some of the officers to move around to the back of the house. After a moment, Carl speaks into a walkie-talkie to communicate with them. Carl continued into the walkie-talkie. We move on the count of five. One, two. He then ceases talking and instead holds up his fingers, signaling three, four, and five. The team then busts down the door. From multiple angles, we see Carl and his team taking down the many drug users in the house. Carl points his weapon to one of the drug users. Carl continued yelling to drug user, Get down on the ground! Get down on the ground! Smash cut to interior salon back room same time in the back room at the salon jason and the female client are naked engaging in sex it's very hot and passionate they almost knock over styling products while on a tanning bed at the first chorus of the song we see the two writhing together in ecstasy they are visibly enjoying themselves both ready to scream in pleasure cut to interior sterling's bar same time The detectives are still sitting at the bar. Jake is standing behind the bar right in front of them. Jake. Well, gentlemen, this has been lovely, but since you don't have a warrant, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Detective 1. Of course. Guilty conscience? Jake. A guilty conscience feels the need to confess. The sociopath will always accuse you of what they are guilty of themselves. Jake, not taking their gruff, gives a devilish smile. Cut to interior drug house. Same time. Carl and his team are sweeping the house. There are several people taking drugs, having sex, playing video games, listening to music, etc. While other officers are arresting some of the offenders, Carl hears voices from another room off screen. Druggy one off screen. I speak, and I speak the speech of a thousand words. But am I using my words, or are my words using me as a vessel with which to express themselves? Carl begins to walk towards the room. He hears a second voice, also off-screen. Druggy, too, off-screen. I stand amid the roar as pigs come crashing through my door. Carl slowly approaches the room, continuing to listen. He hears a third voice, also off-screen. Druggy, three, off-screen. Change is coming change in my pocket is not the same. The hawk is a pig that could be the king. Carl turns a corner. Cut to interior, drug house, dining room, moment later. Carl enters the dining room where the three druggies are sitting around. Druggy too. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things. Of ships and shoes and sealing wax. Of cabbages and... Druggy too looks directly at Carl and smiles. Druggy too continued. Kings. The three druggies laugh somewhat maniacally. Carl stands, baffled. Outside the window, we see flashing blue and red lights. More officers are showing up to help. Smash cut to interior, salon, same time. Tina and the other stylists are still cutting hair. Both workers and customers are chatting. The music is still playing. From the back, Jason and the female client emerge. They both look satisfied. The female client adjusts her blouse. Tina looks on. Female client to Jason. Thank you again for another wonderful appointment. She runs her fingers gently across his chest before exiting. All of the onlookers speak in unison. Onlookers. Faux sappy. Ooh. Tina chuckles. Tina to Jason. Another satisfied customer. She smiles again before resuming to cutting her client's hair. Cut to interior, Sterling's bar, same time. Jake is still standing at the bar, sporting a devilish grin. He's forcefully smiling just to get anger out of the detectives. After a moment, the detectives, realizing they won't get answers, get up and walk towards the door. As they reach the door, Jake raises his hand to wave. Jake, you gentlemen have a good night now. Drive safely. The detectives leave. Jake and the bartender exchange smiles. Jake walks away. Cut to 
interior, Sterling's bar, back room, moment later. Closing the door behind him, Jake enters the back room. This is his office. We do not see much when he first walks in. We do hear a voice off screen. Henchman 1, off screen. We okay? Jake. All good. Just a couple of dicks thinking they can intimidate me. We follow Jake as he moves towards his desk. At the desk, there are several men huddled around. They're browsing paperwork. Jake continued. How's everything here? One of the men, the henchman who just spoke, nods. Henchman 1. All good, boss. Jake smiles and turns. Angle on Jake as he's staring at a wall, which until now we haven't seen. Angle on the wall. It's actually made up of numerous monitoring screens. Contained on the screens are different angles of card games that are being held elsewhere. Angle on Jake, smiling. Jake. And now we wait. He smiles one more time. Smash cut to interior drug house dining room. Moments later. Back at the drug house, Carl is standing in the same room. Listening to the deranged ramblings, he notices others being hauled off in cuffs. He's pointing to officers, indicating to them to proceed with their business. He refocuses on the stoned ramblings of the druggies. Druggie 1. Twists and turns of unknown origin, unknown to you. The road that leads to your destiny, swirling, swirling. Druggie 2. When the drinks are poured and you've closed the door, a woman will ask your business, and you foolishly will answer her. Uneasy lies the head that wears a crown. Druggie 3. Later, the woman shall scream. After that, you will be king. Carl is unnerved by their words. However, he shakes it off and pulls out his handcuffs and puts them on the offenders as the last notes of a rebel yell finish. Fade out. And that is what would be act one of the pilot episode of a very much uh, cable or uh, premium cable TV series tentatively titled Vice. If you enjoyed that, let me know. I could read more. Um, Maybe it's something I might go back to working on at some point. I don't know. Um, That is going to do it for this episode of Paul and All. Thank you all for listening. As I said, um, with uh, next week's episode, there's going to should be uh, the plan is three Paul and Alls. um, One where we're doing something a little different than what we've done before. Um, Three episodes of Lost with Friends all in the podcast stream and yeah. So thank you all very much.